This is a review slash guide slash, well, let's be honest. What this really is is just my thoughts on Tribes of Midgard, the current state of it, and what I feel like I would do if I was a solo developer and what my roadmap would look like. Um, so I guess you could call it a prediction style video, you could call it a review, you could call it a criticism, whatever you decide, but hey, here it is. We're going to get it kicked off, it's going to be broken down into a couple of sections. Um, I'm not super good at editing, so I'm going to try to do my best to keep it as concise as possible. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, Tribes of Midgard is a roguelike slash survival game. You can either play roguelike mode, where you jump in and do the same thing over and over without any sort of real sense of progression, or you can play survival mode, where there's no really end and it's no chance of uh, failure in a sense that you can't really lose. Um, it's just how long you keep going and going. Um, I am not much into the survival crafting thing. Um, they have a nice image here in their icon for it for the load-in um, that shows a very well built out base. Mine would not look like that as much as I like creative expression as a uh, thing with in games that is what draws people to games. Um, it's not really me. I have other ways to creatively express myself so I do not play survival mode at all. Um, there's no sense of challenge or progression there for me. So that being said, um, don't get me wrong, let me, let me make a quick little caveat here, friends. That is not saying that I think it is bad. Uh, Survival Mode, they did a fantastic update recently, and they did a wonderful, wonderful job with it. Um, it is hit 2.0, and it is very popular, very well received, lots of great updates from the prior, and it will continue to grow and grow from here. Um, if you like survival-style games, the crafting, harvesting, whatnot, um, go, go enjoy it, see what you like. Um, it's, it's not for me though. So I'm going to talk solely about Saga Mode because that is what interests me. Um, Saga Mode is the mode where you jump in and you have nothing except the starter kit that you brought with you. Uh, and then your goal is to down as many ancients as possible to collect golden, golden horns, this lovely little resource here that can be used for slight sense of progression, but mostly to uh, benefit your runs in the future, to make runs faster, to get more golden horns, to get more progression, to get more golden horns. Um, so yeah, there's that. For the most part, Saga core gameplay loop is amazing. Um, they did a wonderful job with the way that it feels. The game turns into TikTok time up at day 14, also known as 14 times 10, which is, what, 2 hours and 20 minutes? Call it 2 and a half hours is effectively how long you have per run. Anything after that just turns into how long can I stay alive and why do I hate myself? So, that being said, um, let's get right into it on where it's at and where I think it needs to go. Alright, so we're going to start um, by going through just all the items in the game, um, which seems weird. Actually, let's just start here at the top. You have the rewards track. This is a nice progression system, um, pretty similar to the Battle Pass model that most games have taken up in the past few years, um, really popularized by free-to-play models with um, Battle Royales such as PUBG and famously Fortnite. Many other games have taken up this model because it gives a sense of progression and recursion of, hey, you did everything possible three months later, guess what? You get to start all over, um, which kind of helps with that core gameplay loop of the things that people like when they play games of, I did everything, oops, start it over and do it again. That sounds exactly like a roguelike. So it's pretty fitting. It has a nice sense of progression, feels good. Um, there is no bonus track here that you can pay for, so it comes with it's free, which is a nice plus thing. And speaking of, of course, it's the modern day game model, so why wouldn't you have in-game money? That's the stuff up here. Uh, you get platinum coins occasionally, dollar to or penny to penny to point combo. Um, so twenty-nine twenty-five is twenty-nine dollars twenty-five cents. Um, so. Here's a quarter, here's a quarter, here's two quarters. So you get about two and a half bucks per season. 
Um, I have not spent a single platinum point, so this is for the collection from the entire game so far. Don't get me wrong, I paid full price for this game when it came out, so I probably won't be spending any real dollary dues to get any cosmetics, as I don't really need to. They provide a bunch of really good ones through the free-to-play system. The same thing here with the Golden Horns. So, the progression feels really nice in the rewards track. Um, kind of neat things, it actually changes it up a little bit from run to run, uh, because you will unlock other things that you can build or will drop. Runes will drop, uh, shield, you know, this specifically in regards shield, uh, little recipes meaning that it affects something in game. Uh, it's a new recipe that you get to build. Uh, with the runes, it's a drop. The starter kits also are quite handy and change up the way you play, but the rest of it's cosmetics, um, as it is most of the time with uh, roguelike games and these game models. So, all right, let's move into the progression tab. Um, I'm actually going to go backwards since challenges has the most for me to talk about. Here in the journal tab, it's not really progress, because I don't know how you unlock these things. I don't really remember. I guess you just build them or kill them. Um, but they kind of talk to you about them. So, you got your plants tabs, which is nice to where if you're going to go build something from your recipes menu, you can go find where it is. Ah, uh, yes, I need the butter burr or the mushroom move bolts, a useful resource. Or maybe I'm looking for these gold. Ah, the uh, Highland is the place to go for gold. Creatures, here's all the little critters you can encounter and what they drop. Let's say that you have a quest that you need fur. Hey, look, foxes will do that. And so will wolves. But not... Oh, yeah, werewolves will do... Really? I haven't seen this drop. Oh, yes, they do drop fur, but they do not drop wolf teeth. That's what I was confused about, is werewolf do not drop werewolf teeth, they just drop werewolf fangs. I digress. Um, so creatures, yes, all little critters, creatures, enemies, uh, the element associated with them, and so on and so forth. So, bosses, here's all the big boys. The four titans, also known as Yotun or Yotnar. Um, you have Gerder, or Haloki, Jarn, Saka, and Robota, one of each of the four primary elements in the game. Everyone knows that I am a sucker for elements, so I do like synergy. Fenrir, Jorgamander, and Surtur are the three um, saga bosses, aka uh, ancients they are known as now. These are the ones that you will be primarily hunting that considers your run successful or not in the saga mode. Characters, here's all the humanoids slash good guys slash guys that won't attack you. Um, world event characters down here, um, guys that you buy and sell from, quest givers, and then people in the village, and then this is the good old fashioned tutorial queen. So. And then you, you're a Niner Jar. That's the character you play as. So, location unknown. Have a location everywhere. So, miscellaneous. Here's all the fun things we made models of and we want to show you because we're proud of them. We have the Sita Yagdrasil. We have the Sanctuary. The Bifrost. Shrines is how you teleport around. Some buildings for your town. Three things you need to rebuild. Places where you get chests. Underpass, hideout, ruins, the bridge, beacons. Use the mechanics for the saga bosses. Another mechanic for a saga boss. A new thing added for survival. So instead of the Yuktun coming to you, you go to them. How neat. Is that? Hang on a second. Can I not? Let me keep that up. Looks like there's particle effects in that demonstration. That's interesting. Well, that's been noted. Um layer where you go in. Hi Midgardian. We're just so proud of the language we came up with that it's in the miscellaneous. You'll never physically see it, but you could read it. And then some more of the survival stuff. So, Alright, so journal just kind of tells you what's going on, um, gives you a rundown of things you need to find, but doesn't cover everything because they added a new mechanic called fishing and there's no fishing information in here, which 
probably would be on my roadmap of things to fill out um, as well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yes, including fish. It just tells you that we put ripples in. It doesn't tell you what's in there or where to find them. I mean, it tells you where to find them, but it doesn't tell you what's in there and where I need to go for each one. So fishing does seem like a bit of an afterthought and not fully fleshed out. But they're excited about it, which I can appreciate as a developer. So, all right, moving on. Okay, our next section here is going to be the recipes. This is a very handy area that tells you about how to build things. Ah, uh, yes, I I want to build a sword. Well, that takes four iron. I want to build to build your sword too. Well, you need the first one, then some wolf teeth on it. You just slap those suckers on, and it gets stronger. Don't know how that works, but here we are. Same thing. You build the axe out of stone, and then uh, you put some wolf teeth on it, and apparently you get a little hand wrap for it. So, neat. Uh, this is a great place to look through all the recipes of weapons. Um, you're looking to try to figure out the best possible build. Um, uh, yes, I want to build Sigin's Blade. What do I need? All right, well, iron, healthing, healthing fingernails, amethyst, amethyst, dot the far orb, and then anger bugs hair plus gold. Cool, got it, done. Um, so all the way down to the gold items. I will come back and do a deeper dive on this one. I just want to cover each of the sections before I go too much further. Shields! Yep, that's right. If you want to learn how to build a shield, there it is. It goes through all the armor section as well. Um, you have your three tiers, or your five tiers, sorry. You have your five tiers of everything. Gray, which is common. Green, which is uncommon. Blue, which is rare. Purple, which is epic and gold, which is legendary. Pretty standard RPG coloring system, um, pretty much naming system. It doesn't quite make too much sense to me, um, considering how the stuff is only crafted and effectively doesn't drop from opponents. So it's common because it would be a common drop. It's uncommon because it would be an uncommon drop. It's rare because it'd be a rare drop. Um, this isn't exactly rare. I know exactly where to find it. I know exactly how to make it. I think the epic and the legendary is cool. That makes sense because they're epic and they're legendary. Not because it's an epic rarity drop or legendary rarity drop. So uncommon rare um, are pretty much the stock terms that they've used. Uh, in my roadmap, I'd probably change it up. Um, say something different than common, uncommon, and rare. Uh, epic and legendary is perfectly fine. Common, I'd actually probably be okay because it's common or gear. Um, say Einerling, you know, warrior, or not warrior because that's a term he sells, but like fighter gear or champion, I don't know, come up with something different, but yeah, the, that terminology is just a little bit odd. Um, I'd probably workshop that a little bit. I don't have anything off the top of my head to answer, which I do apologize for that. Tools! Um, you have all these different tiers of tools, so this one you get the lowest durability and lowest amount of ingredients and that just ranks all the way up to gold. Um, for the most part in my experience I have never purchased above blue um, for any reason mostly because cut stone is used somewhere else that is much more important and I don't spend golden horns except for cosmetic stuff um, there's no point to go that high and for the most part you really don't need that much materials um, especially when you're playing by yourself. So, I mean, that's times one, times two, and times three. Times three is good enough, honestly. Um, if there's a ton, a ton, a ton of materials you need to farm, then sure. But for the most part, eh, don't really need anything past this. So, and I'll explain why later in a, a further dive uh, as far as the breakdown. So, um, for me, what would my roadmap look like? Um... I'd probably figure out some way to incentivize getting up to the uh, legendary tiers of things. Um, you know, make them even easier and cheaper to get, but the fact that I have to go through seven cut stone, um, 11 cut stone, that's 18 cut stone for both of those. Uh, I'm not even going to go in getting the fishing rod because there's no point to get the fishing rod right now. We'll get into that. Um, yeah, uh, the golden horn cost too. Just I, I don't know why you'd get that. This these these seem like noob traps. These seem like very specific situations. But for the most part, blue's good enough. 
99 times out of 100. Um, so I'd probably think about reworking this because I'd be one of that. There's not a whole lot of people that get those. And if they do, I want to know why. Why are you getting these? That's not worth your time. So Consumables! All right, so this is all your potions and whatnot. Um, you know, you got a little bit of healing. Some new healing that was introduced is the food. And the whole idea is that, hey, it's not all about just these three potions. Now we have food. You can you can make food. Cooking is fun. Here, go fishing. Get a salmon. Get some kelp. Get some salmon. Get some salmon and some cod. Get some salmon and a herring. Um, get some cod and a herring. Go find some seaweed and have a nice fish platter. Um, yeah, so it just kind of encourages cooking, which don't know why. I've never cooked anything, and there's exactly one character that has one blessing that benefits from cooking, or can synergize with cooking. Um, so the most part, just get health potions. Um, they're so much easier to make. You don't have to go fishing, and um, they heal for so much more. And you can, can't, you can carry more food, fine, but for the most part, you need to eat, like, two grilled meat to give them equivalent of like one health potion so not really worth your time i will say i do like the idea of the heat proof and cold proof seafood um that is very cool but again cold proof and heat proof elixirs are easier to get also i'll get into why you really don't need these too much right now um heat proof i can see a case for and cold proof i can see a case for Okay, fine, so that's both of them. I can see a case for both of, them, both of them, but for the most part, really not super necessary. Um, Man Elixir, uh, I guess, if people like it, they can go for it. So Anyway, I digress. So yeah, potions, you got Elixirs. Um, down here in the purple category, you have even stronger going on. Um, invincibility suit is the uh, gold. And then you have traps, which I'll get more into traps later. They're effectively useless. Um, these don't really do anything, and the Enchant Trip Bar is the only one that does, and has a mechanic in it that allows you to make it stronger, but is kind of a waste of time for what they are. So, uh, Constructions, for the most part, these are pretty handy. You really need ramps. Um, it's great to have ramps. Um, ground can have its uses most of the time, but the, the problem is that uh, you can't build over ocean, so for the most part when you think that you would just use ground to get around, you just can't. So, um, not super useful. I've never found a use for the walls because Yotun stepped through it and the um, health things clear through it pretty quick too. So, no use for walls. Um, boats. Boats got released in Season 2. They are a good idea and are supposed to be the concept of, hey, get on this boat and go explore the seven seas and check out these islands and um, go go fight the the old uh, Yorgamander. Um, yeah, I haven't built a boat in a long time, and I'll explain why here in a bit and what my thoughts are and what my boat roadmap would look like. So um, The rest of the stuff is all survival, um, which I will not cover because... This is a saga thing, because I don't care about survival. Anyway. Runes! These are all the different runes in your game. This is what makes it very roguelite, um, is your runes are different each time. There's a wide variety of runes. Anything from, hey, this makes life easier, to things that change entire mechanics, where you could skip using boats. Um, things that make your runs a whole lot faster. Things that completely ignore ice. Um, so all the way up to certain runes that are almost game-breaking to runes that are game-breaking. Down to runes with a really great concept, but don't really get used too much. Um, looking at you, Surda Rune. So that's kind of the rundown of recipes. We will come back and do a deep dive later. Um, but let's keep trucking. Alright, classes. So, every good RPG needs classes because that's what makes it fun. What makes me different from you? Why are these different playstyles? Are we just a bunch of naked guys running around? Or, uh, are we actually doing something different from each other? 
for the classes. Um, I have a lot of things to talk about, so I will come back and do an individual deep dive on every single class. So fret not, friends, we will return to this one. But I just want to cover it over briefly. It's broken into four color categories. Red is I need to kill things. I am really good at killing things. Purple is I'm good at finding things. Let's go pathfind and let's go scout out stuff. Blue is I'm good at defending and protecting my friends. I shall keep them safe and I like shields. Yellow is we're here to support and make lives easier for our guys out in the wild. I just noticed each one of them has a little diamond. He's got diamond nose, diamond on the heel, diamond on the paw, diamond at the top of the scale, diamond down here, diamond at the bottom, and diamond in the corner. Not sure what the importance that is, but hey, found it. Don't know why. So, we'll come to these a little bit later, but for the most part, four categories. Kill, scout, defend, support. Um, yeah. We'll be back to this. Fret not. All right, let's talk about challenges, the last one here. This is the sense of progression, uh, that thing that gamers really like and part of the reason people play video games. If you've ever done any research on um, some mentalities as to why people play games, uh, self-expression is a really good po point, um, socializing is a really good point, sense of progression, sense of accomplishment, sense of challenge, sense of immersion, these are all things that... Uh, need to be covered when playing games, or should be very well aware of when creating games. Um, Tribes of Midgard does fairly well with the sense of uh, social and expression, especially through survival. The sense of expression really helps that you're able to build your own world. Um, sense of challenge is now presented through these challenges. Uh, everyone likes the sense of progression uh, to play through that. And then the uh, sense of immersion is, well, kind of there. They did a good job with their own language. Um, that's a pretty neat thing. I do believe it's a combination between English and Swedish. Um, try to make it a uh, Midgardian language, since speaking true Viking is just, well, a little too much. So um, When you start off, you only have two of our friends, the warrior and the ranger. So your options kill stuff or scout with a bow. Um, and then you can unlock them as you go. So each one's kind of depending on what it is. Uh, the top two, the Guardian and the Seer, are mostly just play the game, please. So, defeat three Jotnar in a world saga mode. Um, so, stay alive, kill three, and you're done. You get the Guardian. Congrats. Seer, exit ten worlds. So, play ten rounds. Um, there's two ways that your run's going to end. You either exit through the Bifrost and you get to keep your golden horns, or Yagdrasil dies and you lose. You don't get to keep anything. All right, maybe you get to keep a portion. I don't know. I haven't died in a long time. Uh, down here are the other four classes you get to unlock. 20 enemies in 10 seconds. It's a little bit tricky, but it definitely shows that you know how to berserk. Um, Hunter is quite fun. It used to be activate every shrine in a world, which was a lot of fun to try to track down and get that. Now just doing 15 makes it more fair and helps because it's all randomly generated, or procedurally generated. So having those seeds, sometimes you can get a really rough seed and make that quite difficult, so they made it easier. Um, eh, I, I like the challenge sometimes. So Sentinel! Block 25 attacks in 10 seconds. This is grab a shield and get ready to get peppered with rocks. So, um, again, more akin to the class, showing that we don't have to use the previous class. Uh, Warden, this is stay alive. Just keep going. Keep trucking. <laughs> it, it got all dark, and now you're in the post... post uh, fem, you're in Fimbula Winter is what it's called, and you still got to keep going. So... And then down here, they added in, in the recent season, a really cool thing um, that I really like as a mechanic, or as a decision, actually, more of a um, gameplay choice. I very much enjoy the sense of progression and mastery that they said, hey, we're going to make mastery challenges um, for every class that really shows that you know how to play that class and you can flex it anytime you join into a public lobby or if you just like looking the way you look. So, Warrior is all about killing Yotuns. Uh, Uller is all about using the bow. The Guardian, Forseti, is all about using pain release, a main mechanic for Guardian. Um, 
the sear is all about using seedlings. I apologize, these are not green. I'm still working on it. Uh, Berserker is all about stunning creatures by killing creatures, which is pretty fitting. The hunter is all about killing creatures with traps. And shield throw for our strong sentinel. And the warden is about collecting runes. Uh, again, I apologize that that one's not done as well. I'm working on it. So, achievement challenges are everything that you have in the achievements um, for Steam or whatever different, per, I don't know if Epic or PlayStation or Xbox, I'm assuming they do, but hey, here you go, I'm talking from a Steam perspective. So, a lot of just play the game. You played the game a bunch. You spent souls. You spent the souls a bunch. You stayed alive. You revived villagers, revive an ally. Craft, 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 craft. Hey, you got a pet. Defeat one of each of the Yotuns. It's funny because it says defeat an Ice Yotun, but really the only one they have right now is good old uh, Gurdir, Halogi, Jarnsaka, and of course uh, Angravoda. But as if there's multiple. So, hints that that could be to come. I think that is a good idea that they should add more. Uh, it would be in my roadmap. Uh, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and just change my dialect from what they should do to what I should do. Because um, again, this whole video is based on what my roadmap would look like if I were doing this as a solo project. So, uh, Valhalla can wait, defeat the final, deliver the final blow to Ancient, which is fun. So, complete a saga quest, nice and easy. Um, reach day 100 in survival mode. This is a real bear to get, and the axe isn't even that good. Um, I digress, but yeah, that's... That's that's a tough one, um, and of course, like have a hundred uh, in any mode, which is pretty neat for a rune. That's terrible. Um, hey, look, you get the pig, and the pig's really cute. Don't get me wrong, I like the pig. So saga, saga mode's pretty cool. You know, you kill two, you kill three, you get platinum coins. The top tier reward, you can't get any better than plat. Um, so if you're doing that, it's hey, here's some real life money. You did a cool thing. Um, you know, defeat Fenrir once, do him five times, beat him ten times, get the stuff. There's two different versions of Fenrir, which was their first boss, and which is a very cool thing. That every time you go in, you don't know what you have until you open up, uh, or you get to the point where you can see his shrine, whether it's purple or blue. I keep getting them mixed up because I think Doom Howler is red, and I think Wolfmancer is purple. But I remember Doom Howler being purple and Wolfmancer being red for some reason. Anyway, so yeah, do it in eight days. So here, we encourage you doing it quickly. Do it in speed, and you get better things. Defeat Yorgamander. We don't have multiple styles of Yorgamander, and he probably needs it. Because he's the easiest fight there is. Um, and then Surtur, uh, one of the coolest mechanics in the way that it's set up. Obviously brand new. I don't expect to have multiple versions of Surtur anytime soon, but it's still really, really neat. So... Alright, and then survival challenges. Hey, if you like survival, come do survival. We, for some reason, decided to put this set of gear that you can use in saga mode and survival. And some runes that could be helpful. So come on over and play survival. Here's some other stuff if you do things in there, and you can have it, but you, that didn't really do anything. For the most part, you can just kind of do these top ones to get everything you need for saga mode. So, Alright, so that's it for challenges. That covers that section. Um, come back and do deep dives and things that I have eh, not really complaints but just thoughts on so moving on all right moving into customization we have the personal expression piece um, where you get to express yourself through a variety of different cosmetics they've done a fantastic job they look great um, there's some nice clipping there we love to see some clipping that's great um, <laughs> whoops so, skin tones, nice variety of skin tones, uh, four different faces for your character to pick, pick between male and female, hairstyles, a variety of hairstyles um, to go between, it's nice eight to pick from, seven plus bulb, um, you unlock dyes to get different fun hair colors for your character, uh, if you wear a helmet you never see this, if you don't wear a helmet you see it all the time, so there's emotes, believe it or not. No one ever uses them. I forget they're there. You don't ever unlock any uh, in the progression rewards track. Um, and there's really not a whole lot of time to do emote with socializing stuff. You can, but uh, 
for the most part, gets missed just because of the zoom. Voice line, same thing. You can kind of chatter at your friends, but you can also just type. So unless you're really good at doing these, for the most part, don't need these. Um, he's a neat thing. I I don't know. I feel like an online lobby, they could get annoying, but for the most part, I I don't use them. I don't know if I'd keep them in my roadmap. Um, I'd probably just leave them as is and maybe add a few. Probably do an overhaul much, much later. Uh, so, Portraits, these are your little icon that shows up in the lower left hand or during the actual game. Nice variety to pick from. You got plenty to unlock as you go. You got your legendary all the way up to your mythic. These are the ones that, ooh, I finished that season, that saga. So, uh, accessories. You got starter kits. This is what makes your run uh, different each time, however, you want to start off. Um, pretty much, it gives you your certain. In the roguelike portion, you get your certainty of, hey, I always have X, Y, or Z. Um, so, starter kits are really cool and really helps. It's a lot of, oh, what starter kit do I run? What starter kit do you run? Um, another piece of expression, but also really helps gameplay. Starter kits are a fantastic idea, and I would continue to make more and probably retune some of these further on we go. I'll come back and do a deep dive on this because there's some reworks and some points to make on a lot of this. Uh, pets. Yeah, can't have a nice RPG without little pets, especially cuties that they got in this game. Look at that pig. That pig's just stoked to be alive. So, get your drones. So, um, my thoughts on the pets is, on one hand, yes, I love them as a piece of expression. Um, on the other hand, I kind of like them to see them to do different things a little bit. Uh, maybe have a certain passive. I'm very, I'm very torn on this on my roadmap because on one hand, I'd love for them to each do something, have a unique passive or a unique active um, that adds to the customization of the build outs. Uh, but I also would hate for people to all have the same pet and not use that expression just because of the gameplay potential. So there's my thoughts on that for now. But there are a lot of there are cuties. Look at that. That thing's awesome. That thing rolls. That's such a cute idea. Chickens. Yeah, man. Uh, loot chest. Whenever you die, you drop a chest where you come back and loot it. Um, there's a there's four of these. Um, the one you get for this season, the basic one, the Christmas one from last year, and there's a Halloween one from last year that I missed. Um, there definitely needs to be more of these for sure, and I think that that's definitely on their roadmap. It's 100% on my roadmap as well. So, Cosmetic weapons. This is the section where I am tired of looking at basic villager sword, and I want my stuff to look cooler, so I can go and buy with golden horns or real dollar dues these uh, swords or um, axes or hammers or whatever it may be, so that your sword always looks like that when you pick it up. Um, you can also do this just where it's a default um, of whatever it shows. So, a really cool concept. It's really nice because uh, sometimes you just get tired of wearing villager armor, and you know, there's no explanation as to why I need to make a whole weapon if I want my weapon to look like that when I could just set a cosmetic for it. So, uh, nice variety in here and all this. The spheres, the newest things. So there's the fewest of these, uh, but they're pretty cool. I think the only adjustment that I would put on my roadmap for these right now, I won't come back to this because there's not too much to talk about it. The cosmetics, they look nice. Um, but I would say that I would probably add a way in to where I can change each individual weapon um, to have a different cosmetic. So I can assign it to each of the recipes. Oh, I have a Villager Sword 1. Great, I want it to look like my Christmas tree. I have a Villager Sword 2. Cool, I want it to look like the Hell Thing. Ah, I have Baldur's Blade. Well, I want it to look like Baldur's Blade. I want to be able to turn it off as well. So, another thing that I would put in is the ability to assign specific ones, and as well as turning it off would be fantastic as well. So, protections! Yep, it's the same thing, but for uh, your protections. So, shields, armor, what your character looks like. A lot of stuff that's really pretty goofy. Or maybe you're just a really big fan of a set. Um, the Four Knots shield, I think, looks really nice. So I always run that, even though I never buy the Four Knot shield in game. Um, this is an actual... Uh, shield model of a craftable shield um, versus the Headless Norseman, which is not craftable. It is just a pure cosmetic. So they've added in sets where you can go in and pick up the in-game sets of, hey, I just really like the way the villager shield looks. 
Sure you do. But anyway, it's available. They made a cosmetic versions of each one, so. Which is, you know, pretty easy, low-hanging fruit for them to just move it over. So, um, I don't really think I'd change too much in this. There's a nice variety. They look really good. Again, I think same thing as the other weapons cosmetic of saying, hey, I would really like the ability to um, make it to where my uh, certain pieces of armor look like certain pieces. So individual customization per piece, as well as turning it off, because if I, for some reason, end up buying a full set of four knots, I kind of want to see what that looks like. But instead, I just look the same as I did when I was Villager 1. So um, There is something to that visual sense of progression to where you can quickly check if you forget what piece of set of armor you're on after many, many runs. Um, it's nice to glance down and say, oh, okay, I still need to bump up to my next set. Um, or, shoot, I'm still running Raiders? How did I, how did I miss that? Well, you missed it because your visual armor hadn't changed. So, use is there, minute, and minuscule, but there's that. Um, I do want to make a quick little note here with the class-specific armor. On one hand, I really like it as a cosmetic. On the other hand, I could see it being an in-game craftable. So that's some a new set that you could use specific for that class. Um, that's locked to that class to give skill bonuses or blessing bonuses, um, which kind of would make it the best in class for that. So I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, there'd have to be some balancing around it, but it would be a fun mechanic. So might put that on my roadmap as well. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's go to the shop. Yes, everyone loves shopping. There's three categories here. You have visual, featured, and gameplay. Featured is just, hey, remember when we made these? Um, it used to be a rotating shop to where this is all you could buy was up here. Um, that was just what you could get. But now it's like, hey, don't forget about these. They're cool. There's no sales or anything. I don't know why the featured category exists at all, to be honest. Um, it used to be a rotating shop, and now it's just kind of there. So I'd probably get rid of that as a whole or make it towards a rotating sale um, or put in the ones where it's like, Hey, it just comes through the shop every now and then like it used to be. I know that was probably annoying for most people, but I personally like it because it gives purpose to this. So, Or just chuck it, get rid of it, leave it where you can just see the things. So. Um, visuals, all your cosmetic fun times. Um, this is anything you can just purchase just to make your expression piece a little bit better. You can spend real money on portraits if you really want. Um, you can spend real money on pets, which there are a lot. They're adorable. Bundles are, hey, you want that full set? You want to look like that? Um, go for it. Which don't get me wrong. Really pretty cool. There's honestly some good looking ones. I get cheaper. I feel like that used to be more. No, it's actually not bad. Um, yeah, so bundles, there's, you know, these are all golden horns. The ones that are bought unlocked are all golden, golden horn options. So these are all the sets in game. This one is the Halloween specific. This one's been around forever. Um, this one's adorable, and this one's been around forever as well, but the rest are just the cosmetic versions of what's in game. So, here's all the real dollar do ones. You got three that are in the cosmic level. Um, these are pretty much, hey, we made these the newest, so we think that they are the coolest, and I think they change the most. Maybe they have special effects. I'm not exactly sure what makes something cosmic and what makes something mythic, so... Um, high Valkyrie bundle sparkles, so I can see why that would be cosmic, and there's probably feathers constantly coming off you, which I can see why that would be mythic. Um, or sorry, be cosmic, I apologize. Mythic's kind of fun. You know, I want to look like Angerboda. I want to look like Gyrdir. Why is beyond me? That's actually pretty cool. Anyway, I digress. So, bundles are there. Express yourself, look cool. I have a little bit to buy left here with my golden horns, but eh. Pets, a lot of tone, adorable pets. You get, they have three different roosters. This feels like a weird and kind of chintzy design choice. Um, I'm 50-50 on these. On one hand, yes, it is the roosters in game. Um, when you have a world event, you have these roosters you gotta go grab, and these are them. For seven fifty a pop to have a rooster when you already got a free one, um, maybe. It was during the whole chicken event, so there's kind of leftovers. I don't know why I'd want that. 
Vibin's the new one for the um, event uh, for Halloween 2022. And like a little snot nose. That's adorable. That's a 750. Same thing with Valkyrie. He is also adorable. Or she is. Or that's a foul. I don't know. You get the idea. So, the rest of these are really pretty cool. Um, they'll have inter interactions that you can pet them. They'll do different fun things. Um, I haven't seen most of them because I don't own them. But for the most part, pets are going to be real dollar dues unless it's the dogling pup or a little stranger from the Halloween set. So, portraits. Um, if you missed stuff from the last season, they turned into Golden Horn purchases, which is really pretty cool. Um, a nice mechanic that I do like to where you can just go and pick it off. Um, but if you get it, then it's already just comes unlocked in the next season. So, hair dyes, again, if you want to change your color. Top. Gameplay, this is the kind of overall since progression, you completed run, you get things to spend. Let's go here. Well, I can get the golden stuff, which I talked about I've never ever built and cannot find a reason to build. Um, but most where all these runes drops are um, pretty handy to have a nice variety of runes really mix up your runs. The only downside is, on one hand, I'm a completionist, and on the other hand, I know optimization's really big for me too, so I just bought them all because I had runes to burn. But on the other hand, I don't want most of these. Um, I don't really ever play with shields, so Making Waves, uh, Booming Shield, Kindred Impact, I didn't buy for the longest time because I never wanted them. Um, Winter's Wake, Mana Pathfinder, nothing to wield, pumped up, um, are all very much worth your time, as well as Cold-Blooded and Explosive Finale, but for the most part, everything else definitely could go without. Um, Banner Time's also rock solid to get on a start. So, Consumables, yeah, unlock that Immunity Elixir, because it was from last season's Battle Pass, um, or Rewards Track, I think is the technical term. Um, so, it's not bad. I've never used one. It would be useful, and I will harp on this um, a bunch, but... Stun, slowed, poisoned, weakened, or even lit on fire. If there was an icon that showed me if I was stunned, slowed, poisoned, or weakened, or lit on fire in the world of particle effects that I can't see myself, I would love an icon um, to note this so that I'd see, hey, you know what? I see those effects a bunch, so I would definitely want that immunity elixir to pop it so I know that I don't have to see those effects. But for the most part, I don't really notice, which is kind of not a good thing and definitely on my roadmap. The only time I've ever noticed that I'm slowed is when I'm fighting the um, uh, Selkies and they use their slow. I notice it very frequently then, but outside of that, I don't ever notice any debuffs. So, Starter kits, these are critical. Um, you definitely want to pick off whichever ones you want. Um, we'll come back to starter kit deep dive later, because it's for the most part, um, most of them aren't really useful. So, Protections. If you want to be able to craft these, you gotta buy the recipes. Um, the whole serpent set was from last season. Um, same thing with the Fenrir and Yorgamander. They're also from season's prior progress tracks. It's for legendary armor if you wish to spell in golden horns to get golden tier gear. Which, spoilers, you definitely do not need for any stretch in Saga for any reason at all. So, um, gameplay. Here's four weapons. Raider Axe 3 is fantastic for uh, early game. It's really worth picking up. Serpent Nasher, if you... I don't know. I don't know why you get Serpent Nasher, honestly. Um, if you just like to pretend that you can be a summoner, because you can't, but you kind of can, and it's not really good. Anyway, I digress. Um, Serpent Tongue 3, yep, so same thing from last track. And then Ember Bows 3, uh, what makes Ranger worth playing. So, some good stuff in there. All right. Uh, I'll wrap up with settings real quick. Hey, look, settings. We like settings. Um, for the most part, really pretty good setting options. Um, you know, low graphics requirements, always nice. You got a little PTT. Main downside is mouse keyboard controls uh, interaction. Um, you don't have ways to adjust some of these skills for the. Uh, um, the players. So, sorry, some of the skills for the specific classes. Let me make that clarification. So, for the Sentinel Shield Throw or the Shield Ring or the Archers, sorry, the Rangers, um, ooh, 
Uller's Step, I think is what it's called. Uh, you have to push like G or something ridiculous, uh, which just feels odd. Uh, cannot rebind anything on the controller. <laughs> Whew. So, and then hey, you got shift codes because it's Gearbox, so thanks Gearbox. Um, so there's that. Alright, cool. That covers the top down. Let's get into the weeds. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the intro. Um, got all of our tabs covered, talked about the overview of stuff with general kind of roadmap touches. Uh, we will go into a deeper dive in the next series, talking about all the nitty gritty and a bit of optimization as well as customization pieces for components. So feel free to drop a comment or you know, message me over on Discord. It's your host, Pansy Bear. Uh, we'll see you later.